Welcome class, I am Makai, and this is Know Your Fashion History. These are seven of my favorite looks from the 1970s, from music to TV and film to fashion runways. 70s was a free-spirited fashion moment, and I don't mean just the DIY nature of the hippies or the punk rock kids. It was a true era of experimentation. High fashion, which is what most of these picks can be classified as, was often calling to the past. From Victorian sleeves and volume to 30s and 40s necklines and hemlines. It was an era that got intense inspiration from the past and then reworked it for a new time full of dancing, smoking, exploring, and art. So first up on this list is Jane Fonda's dress from the 1971 film, Clute. Clute is a 70s crime thriller where we are introduced to Jane Fonda's Brie Daniels, a call girl who lives in New York City and gets wrapped up in a missing persons case. This film is critically acclaimed and got Fonda an Academy Award for Best Actress in 72. Batty. Did I watch this film in film class? Yes. I remember anything? No. But the fits. The fits were just... Like, look at this extravagant collar on this white blouse, the velvet vest and skirt, and then look at this black belted dress and leather trimmed beige coat. Exquisite. But I really want to talk about the dark blue mermaid dress by the great Norman Norwell, considered the dean of American fashion designers. He was the first recipient of the Cotty Award, which was basically like the Oscars of fashion back in the mid to late 20th century. This type of dress was what he was known for, a sequined sheathed mermaid dress. What I love about this look is that it's so timeless and simple, yet so sensual and really portrayed how casually sexy the 70s were. You were also blessed with this long zipper moment. Let's play a little game just between you and I. Next, we have Michael Jackson's rhinestone set in his 1979 video, Rock With You. This is the music video for Michael Jackson's second number one hit from his first solo album, Off The Wall. Yes, we love this classic of a song and Jackson's stage presence, but look at how this beautiful ensemble catches every single light that dances across it. It's designed by Bill Witten. The black spandex fit was covered with stripes of rhinestones. These pieces were also worn throughout the Jackson 5's 1984 Victory Tour. He designed many of the Jackson 5's outfits back in the 60s and 70s, and even designed Michael Jackson's infamous sequin military jacket and white glove. Witten is seen as a hidden figure in the fashion industry. He's the mind behind looks like Elton John's 70s uh, gorilla suit and boots, Neil Diamond's bungle beads, and Stevie Wonder's African caftans. He told the Los Angeles Times in 1990, I'm just as much as a part of the music industry as Michael Jackson. Well, today we praise a costuming legend that gave the stars all 70s glam and gave us these classic moments to remember. Stephen Burroughs' color block dress, 1970. This is one of the defining fashion moments of the late 20th century. Regarded as the first internationally successful black designer, Stephen Burroughs is the pioneer of many fashion staples we know today such as unique color blocking and lettuce hems. This piece made of wool with its chunky stitching, bright colors and tight fit is more vibrant and youthful. He broke many rules. Not all stitching has to match, hems can be stretched and clothing can puff and alter to the body. Starting as a disobedient student at FIC, he became a premier designer with his own store named Stephen Burroughs World at the legendary Henry Bendel department store. In 1973, he was the first black designer to win a Cotty Fashion Critics Award, and he is still partly remembered for his show at the Battle Rasai the same year. This event was posed as a fundraiser for Louis XIV's Palace, which was really a fashion battleground where American designers could assert their dominance against French fashion giants. 
Stephen Burroughs showcased a cast of African American models like Pat Cleveland and Beth Van Hartson, where they danced across the stage in flowy and colorful garments. The reaction was said to be so loud that Burroughs thought something went wrong. Burroughs is thought to have won that battle for his team of elite designers and is held as the designer that captured the spirit of the 70s with his casual cuts and colors that exuded fun. Star Trek's Starfleet uniforms, 1972. Many do not know of the designer behind the Star Trek franchise costumes, but William Ware Tice is a significant part of sci-fi costume design history. I want to talk about the Star Trek original series costumes. To be clear, the original series aired from 1966 to 1969, but the show reached syndication in 1970, which resulted in viewers in 100 American cities and 60 other countries watching Tice's designs in the following decade, the 70s. Starting at Stanford University with an arts degree and a minor in the sciences, he started his journey in costuming for Universal and CBS. He was recommended to Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek's television series, through a close friend. His background in sci-fi productions like the 1964 play, The World of Ray Bradbury, solidified his place in the Star Trek world. The original costumes were a collective effort. Tyson introduced the scandalous skirts that were very short, yet deemed professional, to capture the end of the 60s. The extreme skirt length was controversial in this time period and garnered concern from the 60s and 70s feminist circles. His costumes were considered cutting edge and wholly original. Tysus's use of new fabrics like velour and his color range really propelled the show's fashion forward. He is known for his work ethic, stopping all those who interrupt his process, and is known for saying stuff like, better rude than late. Honestly, I put this option here because through the 70s, noting the first Star Trek convention in the city that welcomed more than 3,000 visitors in 1972, Star Trek uniforms were and is a staple in pop culture, inviting a whole diverse group of followers, young, old, black, white, girl, boy, who felt the impact of his costuming. Bianca Jagger's Yves Saint Laurent wedding suit, 1971. Nine months after meeting sociolite Bianca Perez Mora Macias married mega rock star Mick Jagger on May 13, 1971, at a St. Tropez courthouse. Bianca wore an iconic ivory Yves Saint Laurent lit smoking jacket with a bias cut skirt. Completing the look was a white veiled sun hat and platform block heels. The ensemble was a comfortable one for the then four month pregnant bride. This look is just iconic and very reminiscent of a 70s wedding, full of haste, sophistication, and ease. The Les Smoking Jacket was the, the controversial fashion statement of the 70s. Smoking jackets were usually reserved for men in cigar rooms who wanted to protect their clothing from the smoke. But then the great Saint Laurent in his Couture Autumn Winter 1966 collection presented a smoking jacket for women. He meant for it to be a modern clothing item for the modern woman in the 70s. Laurent said that, For a woman, the tuxedo is an indispensable garment, and which she will always feel in style, for it is a stylish garment, not a fashionable garment. Fashion fades, style is internal. What I love most about this fashion moment is how Bianca Perez Mora Macias uh, became a symbol of the understated bride. She really exuded 70s um, sexiness without trying too hard and really showed us or a new generation what woman, mother, or wife could be in this new decade. Tim Curry's corset in Rocky Horror Picture Show, 1975. A graduate of the infamous Central St. Martins, Sue Blaine is responsible for the costuming behind cult classic play and film, Rocky Horror Show. The word picture was added when it was made into a film in 1975. At the helm of this film was one Tim Curry. He plays Dr. Frankenfurter, a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. Blaine knew Curry from costuming a previous 1971 Citizens Theater play called The Maids. 
we meet Dr. Frankenfurter in a glittery black lingerie set with a garter belt, stockings, and glittery ankle strap shoes. The look is complete with dramatic makeup and a large pearl necklace. Bling created this revolutionary punk rock look that didn't just focus on the hardness and masculinity of that scene, but observed the nuances in gender expression. This ensemble is so special because it is so overtly sexual and shocking. Fun fact, the same corset that was used in the Maid production was used in the 1973 London original production of Rocky Horror Show. And the same corset was also used in the 1975 film. Blaine, with a budget about $1,600, created a lot of looks out of very little resources. Blaine said in an interview with Rocky Music that, I think the most important thing about this is that there's a lot of love in it. I don't mean in the just emotional sense, but in the care that was taken to make things work, which captures the full DIY spirit of punk. Pat Cleveland and Grace Jones and Scott Berry, Spring 1974. My final pick involves the fashion of Scott Berry. Known for his drapery, Berry is credited with the 70s push towards flowy dresses and pants in women's fashion. He started his career as an apprentice for the iconic designer, Arthur McGee, the first African-American designer to have a store on Fashion 7th Avenue. He started his own line in 1969. Barry Sport was a hit with Bloomingdale's and Henry Bendel, both luxury stores based in New York City. His designs really captured the softness of the 70s, as seen in this December 1973 Vogue cover featuring star Jacqueline Brissett. She is wearing a peach chiffon Scott Berry design. What was so special about his spring 1974 collection, among others, featuring top model Pat Cleveland and icon Grace Jones, is his talent with chiffon and matte jersey. Berry is a designer that believes in softness and femininity. His designs often had soft necklines, which called to the 20s and 30s, but still gave us the color and fluidity that was so popular in the 70s. Barry is a forgotten legend of the 70s and deserves to be up there with Houston. These are some of my favorite iconic fashion moments from the 1970s. I am not a fashion expert, but I am a passionate student of fashion. I want to create a space for fashion obsessed people that don't take themselves too seriously and want to just like, you know, learn a little something, something. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, and comment on this video and there'll be more to come.